Did you think this was going to be a slow summer? Look what Varney and Company is serving up. Greek revolt, Uncle Sam chokes on debt, mass layoffs on the way, and dear Ugo may be at death's door. <laughs> Good Monday morning, everyone. Hold on to your wallet, everyone, everywhere. Greece decides soon if it will take more pain in return for more German money. Watch out if either side says no. Over here. President Obama wants to double down, spend more borrowed money so we can be prosperous all over again. Watch out American taxpayers if he gets his way. At the state level, we're about to see massive state worker layoffs. Connecticut is the latest. The unions there, they've rejected modest givebacks. This just in, the iconic Los Angeles Dodgers have just filed for bankruptcy in a Delaware court. Oda Frank McCord wants to use the courts to keep Major League Baseball from taking his team away. And... Hugo Chavez is gravely ill. He's not in Venezuela. He's still in a Cuban hospital. Varney and company is about to begin. All right, good Monday morning, everybody. Let me introduce you to the brand new company of the week. Charles Payne, of course. And look at this. Tanya Marchio, a real estate vulture. We always play the sound of a vulture. It's not a vulture. That is a hawk, ladies and gentlemen. Real estate vulture supremo. Real estate hawk doesn't sound very good, though. Vulture sounds it great, sounds doesn't it? It sounds much better. <laughs> Nicole Petalides, she is our resident Greek, coming to us direct from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Nicole, the markets are obsessed with Greece. Where are the futures right now? Sure, blame me, right? Well, yes. the futures right now are to the downside. A lot of the traders are still very concerned about Greece, but we'll learn more throughout the week, but very much a wait and see mode because of that. Well, I'm saying this because there are already protests in the streets in Athens. There is a big vote coming up later on this week. Do they accept austerity, yes or no? Do they get the money, yes or no? I think the markets are kind of almost on hold waiting for that vote, see what happens, right? You think they should just say yes and get on with it and save their country? but there's so many people protesting because the majority of the people work for the government and they're all being cut off and they're not liking it. Okay. Right? Summer is, uh, yeah, summer is here in America. Gas prices continue to fall. There's good news for Monday morning. A gallon of regular down another penny, falling to 3.56, down a penny overnight, actually. It's down 43 cents from the high of a month ago. A gallon of diesel is down to 3.92. While we're talking about gas prices, while they continue to fall, the Obama administration may soon push automakers to produce only cars that get their fleet average to an average of 56 miles per gallon by 2025. <laughs> what? <laughs> 56 miles per gallon? Now, what do you make of that, Charles? Uh, it's, it's, yeah, listen, it's a, another way to push electric cars, you know, but it's, it's just out and out ridiculous. It means a lot They're of not gonna get automakers are going to have cars that can't sell. You know, you have a bunch of fuel-efficient cars that don't sell, and maybe you can make money on trucks and SUVs. The Vulture says what? Uh, you know, I have a, a car that is not very gas-savvy, but 56 miles a gallon? Ooh, yeah, I'm not 14 sure. years from now. Yeah. That sounds to me like a big push to get you into an electric car, no matter what. No matter what. And the environmentalists are going to lap this up because that's what they want. Right. You with us? Absolutely. The Greeks and the debt, both affecting your money. And we'll see how much when the market opens. That's in about four and a half minutes. Plus, Coke raising prices. What else will hit your wallet this summer? 20 seconds for the opening bell. In the news background, there is this. Personal income last month up 0.3%. Personal spending. Dead chain, unchanged, flat, no change at all. And if you factor in inflation, personal spending actually fell just a fraction. By the way, the yield on the 10-year Treasury is down to 2.88% this morning. Call that a flight to safety if you like. The opening bell just rang. The early trend on Wall Street is, well, there's no trend. It's going to be pretty flat with a slight downside bias. That's what we read into the futures. I've got to tell you about oil prices. They're falling quite quickly this morning. We're below 90 bucks a barrel as we speak. Get ready to pay more for two big names that you will know. Nicole, start with Coca-Cola and the stock, please. Well, we're looking at Coca-Cola, Dow component. They are raising their prices between 3 and 4%. This will occur on uh, July 31st, so get out there, get your Coke and a smile before the price increases go into place. And it's because their bottlers talking about the fact they're paying more aluminum, uh, more for the aluminum for cans, more for the plastic for the bottles, and more for oil for the shipping. And they're not the only ones that are doing it. Pepsi's going to do the same thing later. On. What's this I hear about Chipotle, the restaurant chain? They're, they're modest price increases, I think, right? 
Well, I'm not surprised to hear about Chipotle doing much of the same thing, raising their menu prices in the northeast and the southeast. So that's right here at home. If you go in there for your burrito, Stuart Varney, you'll be uh, having to pay a little more. Why do you always call me Stuart Varney? Why do you always use my full name? I don't know. It's, it's a thing. Well, Nicole Pedalides, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has opened on the upside. 21 points high in the first one minute and 15 seconds worth of business. We'll see if it holds that gain. Back to you shortly, Nicole. President Obama said this over, said this over the weekend about the nation's budget crisis. Here it is. There's been a real debate about where to invest and where to cut. And I'm committed to working with members of both parties to cut our deficits and debt. But we can't simply cut our way to prosperity. Okay. You cannot cut your way to prosperity. Maybe you should spend it. Don't know. Congress continues to spend, though, and America's debt is exploding. Maybe the administration could take a lesson from President Reagan, 1984. Remember this? You know, we could say they spend like drunken sailors. But that would be unfair to drunken sailors. All right, here we are. <laughs> Fast forward to today. 35 days away from defaulting on our debt. Okay, the August 2nd deadline approaches. Uh, Vulture Real Estate Investor, do you have anything to say about I defaulting on our debt? I don't understand. I do. I don't understand how you can spend your way to debt. Just in normal common sense, that doesn't make any sense. I don't understand it. I would love to hear how that works. I think the president is saying, if you cut spending now, you affect the economy. So we don't cut spending now. We spend more to get the economy going. So in the future, we reduce debt. I, I think that's what he's trying to say. Well, you don't agree with that? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, first of all, he, he keeps using the word invest when it is obviously spending. I did a lot of work this week and this morning in my commentary on Spain. Because, you know, you want a blueprint of what happens when you just think you can focus on infrastructure spending. They build 5,000 kilometers of highways in 10 years. They have the largest network of high-speed rails in the entire continent of Europe. Mm. They have 43 international airports. Guess what? 20% unemployment, and they're sinking like a rock. A lesson to be learned. A lesson to be learned. Let's go to Chicago. Join the CME group there. Michael Gurka, he joins our company right now. Uh, the, we've talked about the debt problem in America. Let's talk about the Greek debt problem in Europe. What happens, do you think, to the markets if the Greeks turn down the austerity plan and vote no? What do you think? Then you're going to see the euro really get spiky, uh, clearly volatile, and I think global equity markets are not going to react favorably to that because they've priced in such positive things already. And just a note, what I just heard on Spain, don't forget the infrastructure they spent on solar also led all of Europe with that. And again, that's the whole problem with debts and de de deficits. You're starting to see that put into the, you know, in, into the infrastructure and it's just really not a spending scenario that you want to see going forward. And these markets have factored in all of those scenarios. Okay, so if the Greeks say no to the austerity plan, Michael Gurka thinks that's a negative for everybody, America included, correct? Yeah, it's clearly going to be highly volatile. And what it's going to do is it's going to erode confidence. I think you're going to see the S&P maybe start to test 1235, which on a weekly is the 50-day moving average. And watch those crude prices. We just breached 90 as we speak yeah. here. We're getting nearer to those lows. $83 of barrels in the cards here. Okay, Michael Gurka, thank you very much indeed on the Greek debt situation. Let's move on to the U.S. debt situation. We've discussed it a little bit already. Congress, as we know, is feeling some pressure to get a debt deal done. The two sides, they're coming together today. The president's holding a meeting with uh, the leading Democrat and the leading Republican in the Senate. And there's 35 days to go before that August 2nd deadline. There it is, 35 days. Joining the company now is Lindsay Piesga with FTN Financial. What, do you think, what happens in America if we don't meet that August 2nd deadline and right. somebody at some point doesn't get a check from the government. What happens? Well, of course, the biggest concern is we risk our sovereign debt rating, so we lose that AAA rating, and already S&P has come out and said, look, if we don't take a meaningful step in the right direction, even with these discussions that are going on, we do risk that rating, and it becomes more expensive to finance U.S. debt. What else happens? Do but interest look, rates go up? 
Of course, interest rates go up. It's going to become more expensive to finance U.S. debt. But look, both sides of the aisle are in campaign mode. So right now, it's more about winning votes and winning over the American people than it is coming to any long-term viable solution. Do you think they will come to an agreement? I think, think what we're going to see is the Republicans are going to offer a concession that will push us into next summer so we can go through this whole process again just months before the election. So you think, you think the likely outcome is the American debt talks would just kick it down the road and just delay it for another six months or a year. That, that's really the way of American politics. That's what we do. We kick the can down the road so that the next administration has to deal with. And the Republicans know very much that Americans are concerned about debt. The more that, Greek, uh, the, more that the Greek situation stays in the headlines, the more the American consumer becomes concerned if, about debt here at if home. If we do kick it down the road for a year, mm -hmm. impact on the financial markets, big sigh of relief, stocks go up? What? Well, right now the market is not uh, that concerned. We wouldn't see the 10-year below 3% no, if, if it was concerned. So again, we kick the can down the road, the market doesn't see it as a problem, and we address it next summer. Okay. Uh, Lindsay Piegza, thanks for joining us. Thank we you. appreciate you being with us. Uh, it's the government, it, this is it, the government is killing my business week on the Fox Business Network, and real estate is one business where the government has been very intrusive. Tanya Marchio is with us. You're in real estate. We always call you, I, I forget, forget the, the vulture stuff. You're in real, real estate. That's your business. It is. Is the government killing your business? It is ridiculous. The new thing is they want to make it 20% down. How can they really make tw everyone put down 20%? But not put it, wait a minute, wait a minute, not okay. putting down 20% got us into a lot of trouble it last did. time around. And I still think responsible lending and borrowing needs to be intact. But we, 20%, that means that someone that's buying a $100,000 house to live in, not an investment, but to live in, has to put down $20,000. Do you really think they have it? But wait a minute, I've been in America 40 <laughs> years and that's what you always had to do. 20% down and prove you've got a job and some income. So this is what I think would happen, and I'm fine with this, because we know that I love free enterprise right private lenders will come in and I would lend someone with decent credit that I think has the ability to pay money to buy a house so now I'll be a private lender or someone right. else will okay. well, I like the idea of the private sector getting in you know the government pushes everyone out then they come up with these different sort of schemes that don't work so well, private, I agree. but it would be nice to see private lenders come in and establish real credit standards to those who could afford to pay back the loan and if they I make agree. a loan that doesn't get paid back the taxpayer doesn't bail them out they just go out of business all right Let's get back to Nicole on the markets because we've got Morgan Stanley. What's this? They like Amazon? What's that all about? They're putting it on the best ideas list. And what does that mean? Well, I, be, I was reading into it, right, because nobody knows what that really means. <laughs> Basically, a couple of things. One, they've raised the price target. The price target now is $245. So clearly, upside potential. They say the market, that uh, Amazon stock is attractive. Growth may outperform. $245, um, Nicole? Yeah. So when? that's really, um, I didn't see the, t I didn't see the length of the target, but usually those are at least 12 month targets. Well, it's um, good for 1%. Right, yeah, it's, it's a great move if they're right about it, saying that the quarterly revenue for 2011 um, is looking good. And so with that, they put on the best ideas list. So All it's right. a winner. <laughs> it's, a, it's a winner. Got it. Time's money, 30 seconds. Here's what else we are watching for you today. Listen to this. The Los Angeles Dodgers, that team has just filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in Delaware. This is owner Frank McCourt's way of trying to prevent Major League Baseball from taking over his team. He can't make payroll because of his divorce settlement. A controversial new partnership for Delta Airlines. It is teaming up with the Saudi Arabian airline people. Uh, people with Israeli stamps on their passport are not allowed in Saudi Arabia. Bibles can't walk in there with a Bible either. Father Jonathan Morris addresses the morality of that business tie-in today. And Connecticut may lay off 7,500 state workers right away. The union refused to accept pay cuts and freezes, even after the governor pushed through tax increases as a compromise. We're covering that one. What do you think, by the way? Email us right now, Varney at foxbusiness.com. We're short on time, Charles. All right, let, me, let me whip through these seven would-be <laughs> movers. <laughs> Decker's out, Outdoors is upgraded to buy a capstone. Last Thursday, BB&T also upgraded in with a target of 105. 14% short position could get squeezed. And Net, NetApp's uh, upgraded at Breen Murray, target 60 Friday. Another analyst at BMO said uh, it was a buy as well. Sara Lee is in a rumor mill. Once again, they're saying Smith Food Fields may make a, um, a bid for them because they're eager to add smoked ham and frozen meatballs to the menu. Got to have them. Got to have them. ASML Holdings, uh, the Texas uh, has a buy from neutral on it. There's a peg rating of uh, under one, so it might be attractive to tech buyers. Fun tech uh, being taken.